Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you. What an exciting time of the year, and what an exciting time to be here at Holy Trinity. I'm Pastor Jack, and I welcome you today. We're coming off of a wonderful Christmas Bazaar Festival that we had yesterday. It was just a wonderful day to get everybody together again. It was a reunion for, for many of us, some people I haven't seen in two years, and they came out and were part of the fun. We, we also have a glowing fireplace in the back behind the tree. Uh, I would request that we light that fireplace today. You guys want to plug it in? You guys want to do that? Because uh, it, it looks really great. Um, we're going to start with the children's sermon, and man, we have a big gang today. Come on up, kids. Good to see you. Good to see you. Always good to see the children. And they, by the way, I can put in a little promotion for these guys and gals. Um, you don't want to miss church next Sunday. You don't want to miss worship. All these beautiful cherubs are going to be part of a Christmas play, and you don't want to miss that. Are you excited? You ready for your play next week? All right. It's a classic. I know all about it, and I saw the script, and it looks really, really good. Hey, um, I want you to take a look at this little cloth that's above where I usually preach my messages on Sunday. What do you see there? What, what kind of symbols do you see there? What kind of design do you see? What, what's the first thing you see there? Erica? You see a horseshoe. Absolutely. You see behind that camera stand, some of you can see it, some you can't. There's a, there's a horseshoe looking thing there. And do you see something else connected to the horseshoe, Giovanni? Gianni, I mean, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The letter A. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you a question. Are you ready? Do you know your alphabet? You know your alphabet? All right. What's the first letter of the alphabet? A. What's the last letter of the alphabet? Z. I like that, huh? There's a certain melodic way they answered that. that. Let's try that again. What's the last letter of the alphabet? Z. Well, if you look up there, there are two letters of a language that we don't speak in this country. That's the language of Greek. Two letters from the Greek alphabet. The first letter of the Greek alphabet looks like an A, but it's really Alpha, that's, the, that's how they say their first letter of the Greek alphabet, alpha. And the last letter of the Greek alphabet is that thing that looks like an upside-down horseshoe, right? That's called omega. So we have alpha and omega instead of A to Z. Now, why is Pastor Jack talking about the Greek alphabet? Because when they wrote the stories about Jesus, the first language they used was the language of Greek. They, they wrote in Greek. So we have Alpha and Omega. They were trying to say that Jesus is everything. He's the first and the last, and he's everything in between. Jesus is everything to us. He's A to Z and then some. So he's Alpha and Omega. That's where that comes from. So it does look like an A and a horseshoe, but those are the two Greek letters. Now, if you turn around... Look at the altar. You see the same two letters there. You see on the left, there's the alpha all, all the way in the left, and on the right is the omega. So now you can impress all your friends and say you learned Greek in Sunday school. How about that? Yeah, you could do alpha, and then you draw a horseshoe upside down, and now you know Greek, alpha and omega. Yes. Yeah, that I'll explain later. I don't want to confuse everybody, but that's a great question. Underneath that, on the altar, there's IHS. That's going to be a, a lesson I'll teach you some other time. I don't want to confuse everybody now. But for now, I just want you to learn the A and the horseshoe. Uh, can you say it again with me? Alpha, Alpha, and Omega, Omega. Those are the Greek letters because the stories about Jesus were written originally in the language of Greek. How about that? All right, now we call our attention to that ring with the camels on it. Who remembers what that's called? What's that ring called there? Yes. The, come on, you know, you know, all right. Cadence, what, what's that called? It's a, re well, we call it a wreath. It's, it's like a ring, isn't it? But do you know what, what kind of ring that is? A Santa ring? 
A candle wreath. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you're right. It's a candle wreath. Yeah, yeah. What? What do you think? <laughs> Troy, what do you think? It starts with the letter A, another A word. A-D. Levi, if you know this, I'm going to be really impressed. Go ahead. What, what's that called? The, all right, I'll, go, go for it, Casey. There you go, the Advent wreath. Well, it doesn't look much like a wreath, so we call it a ring, but some people decorate it with uh, evergreens. But Advent is the season that we're in right now, and it's four Sundays before Christmas. That's why we have four candles on the outside. Well, today is the second Sunday, second of the four. So we're going to light, how many candles are we going to light today? Take a guess. Does somebody take a wild guess. How many candles are we going to light today? One. Yes, absolutely. And then we're going to light another one. And what's one plus one? Two. We're going to light two candles. Woo, what a class we have here. We're going to light two candles. And remember what I said about the candles that don't have flames? That tells you how many Sundays until Christmas. Guess what, folks? There's only two Sundays until Christmas after today. Cool, huh? Well, we have some special helpers who are going to help us. Where is Mr. Klein? Mr. Klein is there. Miss Kaminsky, could you come up, please? They're going to help us with our Advent ring. And we always do some special things. First, we read a Bible verse. And then we light the candles. Today, we're lighting two candles. So, Mr. Klein is going to read the uh, Bible verses, and Miss Kaminsky is going to help us with the two candles. Then we're going to sing our Advent song for today. So, Bob, would you do the honors? And can you go to the lector, please, and speak right to the microphone? Okay, perfect. The Advent reading for <clears throat> this week is taken from the 11th chapter of Isaiah, verses 4 to 7. With righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat the straw like the ox. Thank you. And now Ms. Kaminsky is going to light two candles for the second Sunday in the season of Advent. Thank you very much. You can return to your seats. And we always sing our special Advent song. So Mr. Flynn, could you please cue that up for us? The words are on the monitor for the adults who want to sing with us. Well, we learned a lot today, didn't we? We learned about the Greek alphabet. We learned about the Advent ring. We learned how many candles. We learned scripture and the Advent song. Levi has one last question. Go for it. Beg your pardon? I, I have police boots on. No, they're just regular dress shoes, last I checked, but they do kind of look like cop boots, though, don't they? 
Yeah, uh, thank you for the compliment. They're nice and shiny like the police officers have, huh? Well, look, we could be here for a long time, but there's a lot of learning to be done. So why don't you go off to Sunday school? Thank you for being so good today. You were all very, very good. And have a wonderful day in Sunday school. Don't forget your cell phone. You got to have that. <laughs> okay. Could you please rise and we sing our opening hymn together? <laughs> The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated now as we share our assigned scripture readings for today. As Marga makes her way to the lectern, our assigned reader today was to be Joyce Mall. Please keep Joyce in your prayers. She fell and had an accident. She hurt herself, not serious, but she's not able to uh, share the reading. So Marga Khan is filling in for Joyce Mall this morning. Good morning. The reading for the second day of Advent is from the book of Philippians, the first chapter. The Apostle Paul was the pastor of many new churches. He writes in this letter about his joy to be in partnership with the Christians of Philippi. Listen to how tender-hearted Paul, sometimes a stern preacher, is with his friends as he encourages them to grow in love and knowledge. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart, for all of you share in God's grace and with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, 
how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best so that in the day of Christ, you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Here ends the reading. Please rise if you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. John the Baptist is a herald of Jesus whose way is prepared by, quote, repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As we hear the careful record of human leaders, we sense the spectrum of political and religious authority that will be challenged by this coming Lord. St. Luke writes, In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod, Her Herod was ruler of Galilee and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis and Lysanias was ruler of Abilene during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please have a seat, everyone. As always, it brings me great joy to bring the Word of God to you. I bring this word in the name of the risen and victorious Lord of all, Jesus the Christ, whose birth we will celebrate in just a few weeks from now. No doubt you've all heard the expression, all for one and one for all. You've also heard the expression, united we stand, divided we fall. You know, there's a lot of truth in these statements and a lot of wisdom in these statements. Because, let's face it, if you are stressed out, if you're going through a rough time in your life, if things aren't going your way, and you're really feeling like you're hitting a rough patch in life, the worst thing to do is to isolate yourself. I'm going to say that again. The worst thing to do during a time of crisis is to isolate yourself. Did you know that studies are being conducted which reveal that isolated people often suffer from medical problems? It's true. Isolated people are more likely to have high blood pressure. Isolated people are more likely to suffer from chronic depression. Isolated people are more likely to feel despair and a lack of hope in their lives. It is very dangerous to be alone, to be isolated, especially during a moment of crisis, which leads us to our New Testament reading for today. Because in our New Testament reading, St. Paul is isolated. He's alone. In fact, he's in prison. Now, you may wonder, why is Paul in prison? Did he commit a serious crime? What did he do? Well, back in the days where Paul was preaching, it was against the law to preach about Jesus Christ and the resurrection. The Roman government said anybody who preaches about Jesus Christ will be thrown in jail. So now, our New Testament lesson, we meet an isolated individual. Paul is in jail. He's all alone. Now, in this particular case, he's under house arrest. That means he's able to live in his home, but there's a Roman guard standing right outside the front door, not allowing Paul to come or go. He has to stay in the house. He's all alone. 
But this is what he writes to his friends when he's under house arrest. And that's what we have in our assigned scripture for today that Marga read. Paul writes these words, I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy because of your sharing in the gospel. Now, I underlined the word sharing. Why? Because even though he's alone under house arrest, he doesn't feel cut off. He doesn't feel isolated. He doesn't feel like he's suffering. Why? Because people are visiting him. People are bringing food to him. People are talking about Jesus with him. They're asking questions with him. They're asking Paul, how can we go into the world and speak about Jesus Christ? How can we be evangelists? So even though Paul is in prison, he's not alone. He's not feeling abandoned. He's not feeling unsupported because of the sharing that he's feeling. But let's take it further. Let's look at another part of the same letter. He, say, he writes these words, You hold me in my heart, for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. Now notice, I'm underlining the word share with me. Share with me. Guess who he's writing these words to? He's writing these words to people who live 500 miles away from him. And he's saying, even though I'm 500 miles away from you, I feel connected. You're sending food. You're sending warm letters of encouragement. I know you're sending your prayers. Paul is saying, I do not feel alone, even though I'm in prison, because you are truly part of the body of Jesus Christ. You are reaching out to me, and I will never, ever feel alone. Thanks be to you. Now, I think that's really important because Paul is emphasizing how important it is to be supported in his hour of need. If you are suffering, if you're going through a rough time, you're going to feel a heck of a lot better if somebody is reaching out to you. Many of you heard me tell the story of my son Mike when he was seriously injured in a football game. Mike was playing football. He was seriously injured. His spleen was lacerated in this freaky play on, on the football field. Long story short, he spent 10 days in the ICU at Morristown Hospital, at the intensive care unit. Mike was laying there for 10 days. And my wife and I were, were just worried sick. We prayed all the time. We sat by his bedside all the time. But here's what we discovered. During those 10 days, those long 10 days and nights in the intensive care unit, cards began flooding in to Mike's room. And then the balloons came in. And then the words of encouragement came in. Next thing you know, the football coaches were coming and visiting with Mike. And they were breaking all the rules of the intensive care unit. You know, They say, you can only have one or two visitors. And the coaches said, the heck with that. We're going in there. Offense. <laughs> Five or six coaches would go in. A couple days later, the players walked in with balloons and candy and other things. We even got a fruit basket from the opposing team saying, we hope you're okay. Next thing you know, people from the community, now this was up in Sparta, New Jersey when this happened years ago. We're in Sparta, and the next thing you know, we're getting cards and letters from people we never even met. One day, uh, while Mike was still in the hospital, I stopped at a, a grocery store to get a snack on my way back to the hospital, and some guy points to me. He goes, are you the father of that kid that's in the hospital? And I said, yeah. He goes, I just want you to know my church is praying for your son, Mike. We're all lifting him up in prayer. And I had a tear in my eye because I couldn't believe the level of support we were all getting. Mike felt it. We felt it. And here's the point. When you're going through a difficult time, you need that encouragement. You need that support. Don't isolate yourself. And don't be afraid to seek the help when you need it. Paul said it right here in his letter. He's in prison, but he's not feeling alone. He's not feeling abandoned. He's not feeling like he's the only one in the whole world that has to figure all this out. 
No, he has the support of his friends and even people he never even met. That's why he said, he said, I, I am grateful that you're sharing with me in this situation. We are called by Jesus Christ to reach out to people in need. You ever think of that? We are a community of believers, but we're also a community where we support one another. Did you know the entire New Testament is filled with scripture verses about how we need to care for one another? Not only the people we know, but people in our community we don't even know. Once we discover their need, we need to reach out and help them. Let's look at some key Bible verses to support this. And for your sake, I put them up on the monitor to take a closer look. How about in 1 Corinthians where Paul says, if one of us suffers, we all suffer. Or how about this one from Galatians? Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Or how about a section from the book of Titus? Do what is good for others. And these things are profitable for everyone. In Paul's letter to Thessalonians, he said simply, help the weak. And finally, in Romans, Paul says, we who are strong ought to bear the burdens of the weak. These are just a few verses. There are countless number of verses in the New Testament saying that as members of the body of Christ, we can help one another. Today, I want you to think of somebody you know who is hurting right now. Just think of somebody. And now think of a way you can reach out to that person. Make that person feel loved and supported. Tell that person you're there for them, no matter what. You know what happens when people are in trouble? Others come up to them and they say, whatever you need, I'm here to help you, but they don't follow through. Or they say, I'm praying for you, but they don't say, what can I do? You know, I've learned a lot of lessons over the years. If I know somebody is hurting, I don't just say, let me know what you need. I come right out and I say, I say, please, tell me exactly what you need right now. And how can I address that need with you? Some people don't want to ask for help. They don't want to reveal their problems, and that's okay. But when you say to them specifically, how can I be a difference maker? How can I reach out to you in a specific way? What difference can I make? Tell me, I'll do it. Whether it means going to the store and getting a quart of milk or whether you're cutting somebody's grass or shoveling their snow, what is it you can do for that person? And I'm telling you right now, think of somebody in need right now. Yesterday, I spoke to a woman who is in grief. She recently lost a loved one. And she confided in me and she said, you know, Pastor Jack, this is a very difficult time of the year for me. It's the holiday season. It's hard to feel joyful when I lost the love of my life. It's hard to sing Christmas carols. It's hard to get in the spirit of Christmas because there's a huge void. I lost someone I love. She said, all I want is for somebody to listen to me. Just let me share my grief. Let me cry. Let, let me be down for a day. And if I want to be alone once in a while, I want to be alone. It's okay. What I'm saying is at this time of the year, you may not realize it, but there are people all around you who are hurting really bad. And if you know of someone who has a problem, chances are the problem is worse than you think it is. Reach out to somebody and say, how can I support you right now? What can I do? What difference can I make in your life? And remember Paul, a guy who's in prison, and yet he's still feeling loved, supported, lifted up by the people around him. What lessons can we learn from this scripture today? Well, there are two lessons. Number one, if you are the one who is hurting, please seek the support of somebody else. The Lord isn't calling you to be a lone ranger you don't have to keep a, a, a stiff upper, upper lip and be strong for everybody else. If you're hurting, you need to find people who can help you. Carry that burden. 
to help lift you up and give you the hope and encouragement you need. That's number one. But number two, we are called as the body of Christ to keep our eyes and ears open for people around us who are hurting, not just in our church family here, but what about our neighbors? What about our friends in this neighborhood? Is there somebody who needs your help? What difference can you make? Don't take this the wrong way. I'm not telling you to be nice. You're already nice. I'm not telling you to be generous. You're already generous. I've seen it year after year. What I am saying to you is maybe this time of the year, right before Christmas, we need to keep our eyes wide open, our ears wide open, just to sense who really needs our support the most. How can we be the loving hands of Jesus Christ and the compassionate soul of Jesus Christ? Just like Paul, who said, I feel loved and supported. Years ago, I was serving as pastor of a church, and I started a, a care team called the Shepherd's Team. Now, the name Shepherd comes from the famous Bible verse we love, the Lord is my shepherd. Well, I got this group of people, and I called them the Shepherds, and I trained them, and we went out and did visits. We visited the sick. We trained them to visit people in the hospital. Next thing you know, the Shepherd's Team was writing out cards of encouragement calling people on the telephone to say, we love you. Is there something we can do? How can we help? The shepherd's team, caring for one another. And I'm thinking that maybe as we turn the calendar for 2022, we can have our very own shepherd's team. Now, I know you're reaching out and you're helping one another, but maybe we can start a deliberate, caring team of people. If you want to get on the phone and encourage somebody else, or if you want to visit somebody in the hospital, or if you want to deliver communion in addition to what I already do, we can do this. We can be the hands, the arms, and the heart of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we are called by God to help those who are hurting. By now you get the message. We learn a lot from St. Paul. Paul said, you were always there for me when I was hurting. And then Jesus said, now you go out and you reach out to somebody whose heart is breaking at this time of the year. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. Just say, I love you. I'm here for you. We're in this thing together. Think of somebody today you can reach out to and then do it. Thanks be to God. Amen. May the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
You may remain seated for the prayers today. The prayers are printed on the back page of your scripture insert for today. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. You send messengers into the world to proclaim the day of your coming. Make our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay preachers confident in their preaching, that their words and our lives witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. Send your Spirit to all living creatures that are endangered. Provide them with shelter and care, and bring us into right relationship with the earth that you create and call good. Hear us, O God. Send leaders to our nations, cities, schools, and businesses to work on behalf of those who have lost parents, spouses, and loved ones, immigrants, the imprisoned, those living in poverty, all who are oppressed. Make them bold in their commitments to justice and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Send your servants to care for those who suffer. Use our ministries and our lives to reach out with compassion to those who are hungry, oppressed, lonely, or ill. Grant them healing and wholeness. Hear us, O God. Send prophets to speak difficult truths, even when they are poorly received. Embolden those who ask hard questions and challenge accepted ways. Instill in youth and elders alike a passion for pointing to Jesus in all things. Hear us, O God. We remember your saints, both those publicly celebrated and those more humbly remembered. Confident that your work will be completed, we live in faith until the day of your coming. Hear us, O God. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
If you are able, could you please rise at this time? The peace of the Lord be with you always. Could you please turn to your neighbor from side to side and say, Peace be with you, and share the peace of Jesus Christ with one another. Our peaceful greetings and blessings extend far beyond the walls of this congregation and across the miles to those who are joining us on the internet this morning. We're all so grateful that you choose to spend part of your day with us today. May peace be with you. Let us pray. God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal through Christ Jesus, our pathway and our peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now we join to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Holy Communion is offered to everyone here. It makes no difference what Christian background you come from. When we instruct you, please follow the usher's instructions. We will start from this section, then the center, and then that section. We do have gluten-free wafers available for those who prefer that. Just simply say it to me when you come up for communion. You may be seated at this time. If you are able, please rise. Let us pray. Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all, through Christ Jesus, our host and our guest. Amen. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen.
The first one is an easy one, to thank everyone who helped. I had a list of people, and I thought, if I start going down the list, I am sure I'm going to leave somebody out. So instead of doing that, I'm going to have Marga come up. Come on. Marga is the president of Welka, and she can let you know how the bazaar went. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone for the great job all of you did. That helped so very much. And our men is always for helping us with the heavy work. And uh, we had a great, great day. Um, we, uh, in Barbara's absence, can't be here this morning, and I don't know why. I mean, she wouldn't be tired or anything. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, she did a wonderful job, put a great crew together, all of the rooms. Uh, we were busy, we were happy, and it was just a great celebration. And uh, thank you for Pastor's great support, as always. He's not here. But anyway, he's there somewhere, and he, he also was, as always, it was just a wonderful day, and we did generate uh, somewhere around, I don't have the exact figures yet, but uh, somewhere around or close to 5,000 yesterday, so it was a good job for all. <laughs> job well done, as usual. Thank you, Pastor. And um, we also, I want to thank our Santa Claus, who did such a great job, you know. I know everybody wanted to sit on his lap and uh, ask for what they want for Christmas, but that's another story. Uh, anyway, <laughs> thank you, Santa and Mrs. And so uh, anyway, it was just a great, great day, and I'm so happy to have been a part of it, and I want to thank all of you so very much. So, And also, we've got a few items left in the back room, so we'll be there if you want to browse around after church. I'll be there to help. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. It was really fun yesterday. I hope I'm told not to bend over. Uh, I was told uh, that we did well. We did. It was fun. I think everybody was in good humor. The vendors were, were very good. And um, for those that didn't come, you missed a good time. Poinsettias. They, there's something. There's a form in, inside here for your poinsettias if you'd like to order them. I believe it has to be by next week. Okay, let's get many, many. I'm a flower person. Let's get many, many and just decorate the whole front of our altar. It would look beautiful. Uh, children's play. Come on up. This is Ruth Ann Griner, and she she writes them, directs them chastises them, laughs with them. If any of you were lucky enough to be in here right before church started, you saw the children working on the play. They've really worked very hard, and we're really excited about it. Next week, it's during the service instead of the sermon. You get a week off, Pastor. <laughs> and they they do a great job, and we just want everyone to come and have a good time. And afterwards, there's going to be a luncheon, and there's a sign-up sheet at the back table to please bring sandwiches or a dessert. And for you moms and dads out there, Saturday, 10 o'clock to 12, is our dress rehearsal. Please have the kids here ready to go. We'll be trying to be prompt and get them out by 12. If anyone can't make that, please let me know. All right. Oh, and also, this year, the kids made their own props, too. They did a great job with that also. Thanks, Kiki. Aren't we lucky to have all these people? <laughs> it says lunch and learn on 12-15. I understood from last time that the pastor says no. I guess, isn't this a baseball term? He's going like this back there. <laughs> Out. Out. Okay. There, there is no lunch and learn on the 15th. Yes. We'll be, we'll be starting in January again. And we, we, we left off with John. We finished John. We're going to Philippians, I believe. And I don't think most people know about that book. So it would be, it's going to be interesting. Come, join us. Bring your sandwiches. 
It says volunteers needed. I don't know. There are so many volunteers that are needed for so many things. There's always a sign-up sheet. There's always, you can always question me, but I'm not sure what volunteers we're talking about. Um, anybody else have anything else to say? Ellen. Good morning. We're, we're finished with our sock drive, and I just wanted to tell you that we had about 350 pairs of socks from the churches that participated. So uh, they'll go to all the uh, families who need them. Thank you. Does anybody have anything else? Yes, Andy. No, that it's not up there. I know that was next. That was next on my list. I was going to say the good thing about that is we're not going to have this small church chorus. We're going to have a lot of people. There will be a lot of young people with higher voices than us old people, for sure. Uh, we can't reach those notes anymore. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. It always is a lot of fun. So please come. Chad works very, very hard with everybody. And it's going to be a good day, okay? Um, I think that's it. Does anybody else have anything? No? Go in peace. Christ is near.